guy, this post seems legitimate. It seems, you know, um, with steps to grow into bigger arenas. So we made a deal. You know, we, we emailed each other. I told him who I was. Well, well, this is Omega Brown. Um, we met up at a bar, you know, and, and my wife, you know, she, you mean some guy on Craigslist? You know, <laughs> you're going to get murdered. You know. I like. With the very least, you're going to cheat on me. <laughs> we're fine. We're good. Yeah, right? <laughs> This video is brought to you by Flaviar. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to original local music and the people and the places that help make it happen, uh, including my guest. And my guest today is a singer-songwriter that I met at the Homegrown Songwriter Showcase put on by Hal Savar all the way back when it was put on at the Strat Casino Hotel, which it was there for like a month. Um, he's been writing music or doing music since uh, he was 12 years old, basically, but the current moniker he goes by began in February of 2018. We're going to learn more about that. His upcoming album, Something More, is coming out soon, so definitely follow the uh, links down in the description for his social media so you can find out where to get it. In the meantime, please welcome to the channel, Josh Gilbert from The Altered Script. Say hi. Hello, thank you. Thank you very much for having me, and Happy New Year, everybody. It's uh, great Happy to be New here Year. at Room 6. Yes, we're going to crack this open uh, with uh, some Grappa de Moscato, and if you're not familiar, it's a sipping shot. What do you think? Great way to kick off a new year. Are you okay? You, and... don't, you don't have to drink it. It's okay. No. I love it's not it. for everyone. My family hates it. <laughs> no, it's very interesting. This is unique. I have not had anything close to this. Mm -mm. And I understand why you said it's a sipping shot. Yeah. It's uh, you smooth. don't want to <clears throat> yeah. too much of that. So, uh, Josh has... Or sorry. The Altered Script. One of those. Yeah. The guy with the great first name has <laughs> the... The, the unique distinction of uh, being my first 2023 interview guest, and also the first guest that I'm using the lavalier mics on. I hope that, you know, this becomes a, a thing. I know they're, they're, they're not always the best thing to look at, but, you know, I, I'm sacrificing vanity for audio quality for you. Yes. So, all right, so, number one, I wanted to say welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. If anybody doesn't know you, thank you very much for watching. Uh, tell them basically a little bit about yourself, who you are, and, and why the Altered Script. Um, yeah, and thank you, Joshua, for having me here at Room 6. It's been an honor. We've been looking forward to this for months together. So long we've been trying to and get this to, to happen. Scheduling and everything else. You know, life comes up, the holidays. So, you know, back in 2002, you know... Um, I began writing and playing music solo, and I always gravitated towards guitar, um, acoustic guitar, and um, basically throughout the years, original music, all that, um, different names, different uh, stage names, all that, but once I um, got the information, got the call, unfortunately, that my mother passed away suddenly in 2018. Um, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for that. And, you know, it was it was sudden and all that. But in the time frame, I wasn't doing music as much as I was hoping to be doing. You know, in live shows and promoting other artists and, and things that we do here, uh, especially in Las Vegas as an acoustic artist, you right. know, and we're talking a few years ago, you know. So I kind of, you know, emotionally driven or whatever else, you know, um, the said... I'm doing this, you know, 100%. This is my life. This is what I want to do. This is what I've always been doing prior to that. And again, was under different stage names and everything else. But the altered script is kind of literally how it sounds. My life, the script has been altered. Mm -hmm. It was so sudden and so, you know, different. And then, you know, I'm not this person, but there is a little bit of a religious factor. Uh, my mother, you know, was very Catholic and all that. So there's alter in the word altered. Oh, um, I get it. Okay. And so that's why 
I chose that name as what is currently my solo work. Um, but it's more the altered script is an idea. It's those people like me who are thrust into something or a different lifestyle than, you know, it hurts, you know, good or bad. It doesn't have to be dark and bad things, but um, just the things that weigh us down that I'd like the altered script not to be a band name. I'd like it to be a community, you know, oh, okay. um, a group of people that can come together, record music, um, write poetry, drink, smoke, you know, talk to each other, you know, in this kind of chaos of a world we live in. The altered script is an idea. It's not just a band name. Gotcha. And I haven't quite got to that point, you know, of promoting that and speaking that way about it. You know, the altered script is for anybody who feels dramatically good or bad. It doesn't have to be doom and gloom, but good has happened. Right. You know, your script has been altered. What you thought was on Monday is now different on Tuesday, you know. So it's an altered script, you know. So that's where the title comes from. Um, I'd like to make my family and mother proud, you know, and uh, continue to write these heartfelt, more emotionally driven lyrics and bring people together. So that is the altered script as a whole. I like it. And there's the old joke, you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans kind of thing. It, yes. it changes every, yeah, every day. You never know. Um, I like that whole, that it's, kind of like almost a creative commune type situation you're trying to create. And I like that a lot. Yes. Exactly. From, for, so from that, from more than just a, a solo or a band name, can we talk about the Omega Brown band? Yes, absolutely. Um, what, what's, what's the story there? That's an incredible story. That's um, the only question I have for you. Because <laughs> you don't have much online that I can dig up. I hope even this hits camera. Um, yes, I don't have much on me. And some of that's just because of... I've lived everywhere twice. East Coast, West Coast. <laughs> um, there's also the factor of, you know, intimidation and social media that I've never been professionally trained. You know, I've never been professionally vocal coach. You know, there's that kind of internal, am I good enough? You know, Imposter that, syndrome. That yeah. we all go through. Mm -hmm. And then we go through peaks and valleys. You know, there's sometimes, oh, wow, greatest song I've ever heard, you know. And then it's, you suck. You're you're this, you're that. And I guess growing up and getting more in tune with who I am as a person, I drown that out. You know, it, it's not about that anymore. But Omega Brown Band, <laughs> uh, I love this question. And a lot of my growth in the last few years comes from that project. Um as many of you viewers might see, um, Fernando Omega Brown is his legal name. Mm. Um, Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Omega is his is part of his legal name. His legal middle name. Somebody, wow. Fernando Omega Brown. Your parents is somebody really had plans for you. <laughs> you probably picture you hear a name like that. They look like a certain something or not, but. I picture the kingpin for some reason. I'm glad, right? Joshua, you asked me this question because our story, I wish he was here to do it with me. Uh, we met on Craigslist. <laughs> we met on Craigslist. Um, What's funny about that is off camera, we were talking with my wife about how uh, everybody that's come through, even people I have no clue who they are other than meeting them online, everybody who's come through for an interview has been so nice and decent people and gotten really lucky on it, some of them. And that's hilarious. I've, I've yet to get anybody on an interview off of Craigslist. <laughs> Out of all the questions Room 6 could be asking, I am grateful that you asked this because this is a lot of my development growth. And it also comes in the timeline of losing my mother in 2018 because uh -huh. it was in 2019, not too long after. Uh, I never checked Craigslist. I don't know if you do or not. No, I, I go there maybe if I'm looking to buy something cheap. Right. Um, it was, I, I swear to the dead eye, this is how it played out. Uh, I'm on Craigslist mm -hmm. randomly and I'm in the music section, you know, musicians looking for a jam band or a guitarist, whatever. Yeah. Here comes a post that was along what I do, you know, um, singer, songwriter, acoustic, reggae rock, you know, emo, you know, 
didn't seem like it was some 96 year old you know, <laughs> trying to get back in the game. It was actually just looking to have fun who, and play covers, man. Right. Yeah. But this guy, this post seems legitimate. It seems, you know, um, with steps to grow into bigger arenas. So we made a deal. You know, we, we emailed each other. I told him who I was. Well, well, this is Omega Brown. Um, we met up at a bar, you know, and, and my wife, you know, she, you mean some guy on Craigslist, you know, <laughs> you're going to get murdered. You know, I like, at the very least you're going like, to cheat on me. <laughs> we're fine. We're good. Yeah. Right. So I'll never forget. I'm sitting at the bar playing a little poker and here comes Fernando and uh, says, you look like a musician. Are you Josh? And I said, I don't know what the hell that fucking means, but yes, that's me. So You look like you spend money on things that make very little effect on people. Yes, all that. <laughs> and so what happened was we had thought it'd be an hour or two tops, having right. a few drinks. Good six hours went by, and a lot of whiskey oh, disappeared. And your wife's like, where and are you? I mean, that I'm still standing. We're good. So, yeah. you know, hey, yeah, we're good. But... Um, I just, we vibed. That was someone who was very empowering to me. And then I realized quickly, we started having jam sessions. We got a band together, drummers, bass, all that. I realized, and I hate the word better, but I was like, these guys are better than me, you know? Oh, and they okay. they educated me on how to play my instrument differently, uh, meaning vocally, guitar, bass, all that. And then we started, um, well, oh, I'm sorry. What was different was Fernando Omega Brown was more of a cover artist at the time. Me, I only do originals. I do not do covers ever. You will not find me at Mandalay Bay or whatever doing covers six nights a week. Sure. I'll never do it. I'm just putting that out. That's why you have a day job. Well, I, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, if I want to make some money, do it, whatever, maybe someday. But I'd like to be known as an original artist. And real quick, I just want to pop in. Speaking of performing and playing, stick around. We're going to hear a couple songs from him up in room six. It's going to be awesome. And you'll get to hear uh, what he does, kind of like the essence of it, as opposed to in the middle of the cacophony of a live show. So I like it. You know, Stick around. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, and if you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address down in the description or click the room six social media link. That's also where you can find ways that you can support the channel like room6.shop for merch, my own CDs I've got out, or become a patron on Patreon where you can, you know, see some patron-only content. Back to the interview. Actually, before that, oh, perfect. Yeah. I think it's time for a boost break, and I think it's time we hear from future Josh. What do you think? Future Josh. Future Josh. He has an important message. ba da ba ba And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. To quote Ron Burgundy, I love scotch. I love scotch. Scotch is got scotch. Of course, I'm also partial to a nice bourbon. Sometimes, however, one can get a little bored drinking the same old stuff, so it's always fun to try something new, but without breaking the bank on an unknown product. Good thing Flaviar exists. Flaviar is a band of spirits enthusiasts inspired by culture, rich history, and the art of distillation. They forage the world of spirits for the finest, rarest, and most unique expressions out there and pack it all into a 21st century members club. You are what you drink, diversity and quality matter, and all that should most certainly be enjoyed with style and in good company. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6 and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 7% off the entire site. Just enter promo code get started at checkout. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Flaviar for being a sponsor, and let's get back onto the show. We're back! And, uh, you know what? I know that sponsor spots like that are kind of annoying sometimes, but it's a necessary evil when you're trying to make better videos and support the local scene like I am. So, if that interested you, click the link down in the description for it. It'll help me out, it'll help you out, everybody wins. Back to the interview. So, I wanted to talk about um, some of my more usual interview questions, not least of which is, let's talk earliest musical influence. Now, you, we talked about the intro, around about 12 years old you were doing music, but yes. there was music before that, obviously, when you were younger. What, what would you say is that earliest musical influence that made you go, I want to do that? Thank you for that question. I, I just <laughs> wanted to 
end by saying with Omega Brown, you know. That, Sorry, uh, I should have said, are you done? <laughs> um, no, 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 we're good. Um, that, you know, we met, we formed a band. Um, I ended up becoming a bass player, which I <laughs> never had done before. I'm sorry. And you have they, no idea how many times someone stood here and was like, I've never been a bass player, but they needed one. So. No, they, no, it's legit. It happens. And, you know, I was used to being the front man, and now I was doing that. So, long story, um, but to finalize with Omega Brown, um, he is an incredible musician, and please go check out everything he's been doing. Um, and if you're watching, come on the show. Let's do an interview. Yes, and um, I, I owe a lot of thanks to him and the direction our band had. Um, you know, when you're a solo acoustic guy, you think you're all that in a bag of potato chips, and then you have other artists you're working with who are, quote-unquote, better. And I'm talking music theory and timing and how to write an original song. Pros. So I got thrust into a very unique and awesome situation thanks to Craigslist. So, um, that's that. But, um, to answer your question, um, originally it was, I was 11, 12 years old, started messing around with guitar. Um, my original influences, you know, of course, are probably the things you hear on the radio, you know, or what your parents play. Mm -hmm. But I took a strong liking to late 90s, early 2000s, Johnny Resnick, Cuckoo Goo Dolls. Oh, Wow. Um, I, uh, Gutter Flower, um, uh, Dizzy, Dizzy Up the Girl, or Dizzy Up Name, I'm sorry, but the, uh, No, I think it's Dizzy Up the Girl. Dizzy Up the Girl. Yeah. Um, albums like that, um, just, I completely connected with. And those who know, the Goo Goo Dolls or Johnny Resnick's style of writing on acoustic guitar, mainly, it's never in standard tuning, which none of my guitars are either. I didn't um, realize that, but it makes sense. They're very, very weird tunings. It's like straight, all six strings are D. That is such a singer songwriter thing to do. It's just like, ah, everybody plays in standard. Right. Yeah. And it's weird, right? You yeah. know, and so I, I also tune my guitars differently. And, you know, it's weird. You know, you, you offered, hey, when you come over, uh, I got a guitar for you. And I was like, no, oh, probably <laughs> won't work because I do Again, different tunings. That's you know? generally for people who are like, oh, I didn't know I had to play. Right. <laughs> oh, I had to be here today. No. <laughs> yeah, like, I, you don't have to play, but, if, you know, here you go. I have, a, I have a guitar and it plugs in. Anyway, you were saying. But, um, yeah, Johnny Resnick, and I'm not talking, you know, the big hits. Iris, um, Here is Gone, you know, thing. but there are some... Name underground name there's some underground in my opinion hits that are extremely like underappreciated and is it's almost kind of a timepiece too you think late 90s early 2000s you know mm -hmm. what happened in the world uh 9 11 and much war you know like there is kind of a very changing point in society especially for america you right. know and and the world that music also changed you know, and, and all that. So that's a very in early influence. Um, growing up, you know, listening to 80s, 90s music, of course. Uh, I've never really been into hard rock or metal or things like that. I've always kind of gravitated to, to music that, you know, the lyrics I, I agree with and understand, but the music itself isn't just blasting at me. It's more a relaxing thing. Right. So, you know, I've been in and out of a lot of bands and hard rock and all that, but I always go back to solo acoustic because I can just do it. I'm at home, you know? Right. Um, I can write a song that's based on Sorry. Josh <laughs> spilling his shot glass right here. Oh, it's empty. And it's acoustic, <laughs> you know? And it's okay. God, I'm glad they're, the, the, I'm glad I was, that wasn't like by the lavalier. That would have been really right. loud. <laughs> I tried to be all... Go with that. Yeah, but, yeah no. Um, okay, I, I think you basically answered that. We, we, we had a um, roundabout way of answering the, the, the earliest influence, but we got there. So my question is, my next question is this. And this is a question that every musician hates to get, and I apologize in advance. How would you define your musical style? Elevator pitch, go! Um, musical style? Yeah. Um, if, I... if you had to sum up your music in a paragraph. If we're talking genres, I'd love to say, you know, obviously, solo acoustic artist. Um, 
can't wait to have a full band that represents what I'd like to do. But right. um, believe it or not, reggae is my biggest influence. I listen to reggae all day. Um, more new reggae than 70s, 80s Jamaican reggae, but more American pop rock reggae, I guess. But um, reggae, R&B, emo rock with a storytelling line of country. Um, I believe I, yeah. I have something I have to say. My songs do not flow like we discussed earlier, you know, today. Um, with the three minute, 30 second radio edit, first chorus, first chorus, bridge, chorus, song ending. I like to just write my whatever's happening on paper. Mm -hmm. I pick up that guitar. Um, whatever else happens, happens. But... Those are my influences, you know, those genres. And it's a kind of a pinata of different things. But I believe there is a new genre that hasn't been created yet that can incorporate Ooh. all of that. Oh, you know? we have a groundbreaker here. And uh, what are you calling it? The ultimate script. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> of course. All right. As. Of course you are. So, all right. You like that? <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> Worked it in well. Yeah. Boom. Yes. So from there, we have a couple more questions. We're almost done. Oh. Speaking of which, thank you very much for hanging out. Appreciate you. I appreciate all the new subscribers. It's been a, you've been awesome. If uh, you know, feel free to like and share. Blah blah blah. You know the drill. But I wanted to ask, what's uh, what's next on the horizon for you? What's like, what do you want to promote? What do you want to tell the people about? Um, Besides your album. Yeah. Thank you for that. Something more will be released here shortly. Um, a bigger picture, smaller picture. If you are into music, if you're a singer songwriter um, or a band or whatever you do, um, it's kind of generic. You hear this all the time. Don't give up. Um, I'm not some major rock star everybody knows, but you find your small victories. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's new equipment, a new computer, a new guitar, something else that you five years ago couldn't imagine being able to have. And now you have it. Yeah. So continue that. Once you get to a couple of maybe items or gigs, you know, oh my God, I just got booked at Hard Rock Cafe in Miami, you know. Well, that's not your, that's not your peak. That's... You know the universe and society saying, "All right, keep going." So, right? Who knows what's going to come out of that? You know, we as a society have been through the last three years together, and pandemics, and in the artistic world, we were, you know, shut down for a minute there, and we had to yep. reorganize and and regroup and figure out how we do our passion. But you know, don't give up. You know, just keep doing it. So my goal right now is to continue building my home studio, um, finish this album, and hit the road. You know, after being locked down and, and you know, kind of bills are going higher and everything else, yeah. I, I have kind of like a, a freedom I want. You know, and yes, there's rules you have to play by and rents are due and all that. You know, I'm not above it. None of us are. But... Yeah. I would love, and my next goal is to, you know, once the album's done, go promote it, you know, and do a 10 city tour on the West or wherever, you know, but just share my passion, share my story and also meet new people and learn their story. Cause we're all going through this together uh -huh. and it's been very challenging the last few years. So as an artist as a musician as you know what you're doing here with room six it's almost like an obligation that we have internally that we're doing all of this work and writing and soulful expression for the greater good the greater good um sorry you heavy but uh that's <laughs> that's where i'm at you know i want i want to do good i want to let the person because again as we discussed i was 11 or 12 years old starting out I want those 11, 12 year olds to know, just keep doing it. And that's, that actually leads perfectly into my last question. You made it. Yay. All right. Let's talk to little Josh, not me, him. Let's talk to 
Yeah, but we're going to talk to little new new musicians. Is what we're doing. We're going to talk to somebody that comes up to you and says, "How do I be like you?" <laughs> we're going to talk to little the the the, the people who really I, they have they feel it. They have the music in them, but they want to. They don't know how to go about doing it. The great question. Yes, yeah. but also let's just talk to little you new musicians. What is one piece? I, I ask this of all my prey. What is one piece of advice you wish someone had given you before you decided to pursue music? Um, not just advice, but um, for new and upcoming artists. Mm. Um, and don't say change your strings. <laughs> I get that all the time. <laughs> don't worry about that. Um, something I see, you know, is just communication. Um, those of us who've been around the block a couple times and played a few shows in multiple places, we understand, but when you're new and it's your first coffee shop and you got your Walmart acoustic guitar you hey. know, and you're terrified and you don't know what to do and the guy or girl before you just played an immaculate set and you have to follow that, you know? Yeah. You know, damn, I wrote the song yesterday. What the hell am I doing? I don't, I don't even know some of those chords. Either. Right. Yeah. Like they're <laughs> doing sit with their pinky over here on the 12th and their index is on the first. What is go Yeah. They got people wearing know, their shirts. <laughs> you know, don't listen to any of that noise. Um, yeah. Close your eyes. You know, what you do is believe what you're doing. Um, don't let that noise in. Mm -hmm. um, I wish people told me sooner when I was younger, you know, exactly what I'm saying is that you're doing it, you know, no matter if you think you are or aren't, you mm -hmm. know. Um when I was young and 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, I was playing shows in multiple states. And I just thought it was mediocre. Years later, people said, you were playing shows? You went on 16? tour? You did this? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, it doesn't matter if it's a coffee shop, you know, your mother's basement, whatever you're doing, just do it. And whatever is being inspired... Um, Surround yourself by like-minded individuals. It doesn't have to be other musicians, but people who are into the arts, people who are into promotion, uh, people who are into these days, you know, internet marketing and Facebooks and, and free, you know, advertisement um, network. Um, half of what you're doing, 10% of what you're doing is what you're doing on stage. When you're done playing or before you play, Go talk to room six. Go <laughs> talk to the host, uh, Hal Savard, for example. Go talk to the five or ten other bands that played that night and meet them. Shake their hand. Be humble. Make connections. You know, be smart about it. Yep. You know, almost all of my big gigs I have now out of state or other venues are because I, hey, how are you? Good set. Nice to meet you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, even if you think you are God's gift to music or whatever you want to do, fine. You know, musicians are arrogant people by nature and it's what we do. But there's also a lot of humility and pride, you know, in share. Uh, what's the word? When we're sharing our soul mm -hmm. on stage to strangers. That's very intimidating, very scary. Musicians are a complicated lot in that we're full of Pride in what we have to offer, imposter syndrome and self doubt, uh, and also just that focus of okay, wait, G A C D, <laughs> right? And, and all of that. I, I once heard when I studied. I studied voice uh, briefly. Sorry to cut you off. I studied voice for a few years before I realized I don't want to do this for a degree. And the best description I ever heard was, "Your brain is going to divide into four sections, and the first section is." And, you know, focusing on whatever it is you're currently performing. And there's another section thinking about, you know, like, oh, I got to do the laundry later or whatever. And there's a section about, you know, all, your self-doubt and your, you know, all that. Yeah. And, and then there's also the, um, the section that is, how can, you know, oh, I can make this better next time kind of thing. There are all those sections of your brain. Your brain just divides as a musician. And so I... All over the place. Yeah. Yes, always. Yeah. And and while it's true that a lot of musicians are very confident and pride, you know, prideful of what they they have to offer, they're also insecure. Let's be honest, we're very, so very insecure. 
<laughs> most, most, and I'm not going to say we, but mo- most, you know, thrive on that attention. But also, yep. there's some vulnerability there. Mm-hmm. You know, when musicians, especially original artists, you know, who are sharing something they wrote and... It's not like they have degrees in English and, and, you know, are professors at universities. No, they're sharing what they wrote at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. drunk on a Tuesday (laughs) when their girl just dumped them (laughs) and they lost their job and everything sucks. And they, instead of doing worse situations, they write it down on paper. They grab some old beat-up acoustic guitar and write about it. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, they put it on to YouTube, to social media. And maybe their friends or acquaintances, oh, it's a great song, it's a great song. Or there's the negative, you know, ah, you pitchy, you, your guitar You sound too, like so and so. Whatever, you yeah. sound like someone. Yeah, exactly. Um, really, that's the best you got. At the end of the day, it's like, if you are an up and coming, if you are somebody, not even that, if you're trying to get into this world, you are going to hit, be hit with so many no's in your life, you are going to forget what the word yes is. Right. And at the end of the day, week, month, and 10 years, it builds you up. It makes you stronger. So if anybody watching is younger and, and just starting out, like I did at 11, 12 years old, just keep doing it. Um, you'll know. You know, if you're doing it for the vanity and the likes and the hearts and the attention, you're not in the right business. Right. If you're doing it because you love it and you got an acoustic guitar and your voice is kind of mediocre, like mine and my style. um, Really sounded it, Josh. I'm (laughs) I'm beautifully enhanced by you that I have been offered to have this interview and I'm here with Room 6. So it doesn't matter. What your image is, what your sales are, what you offer. Just be you, be real, be honest, mm-hmm. and those doors will open. And my last little point to that is by writing original music, you have no idea how much your lyrics connect with people you've never met. I get those calls and emails every day. Yep. That song is amazing. So. I, I can't say it any better than that. Um, Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being on the channel. Stick around. We're going to see Josh as the Ultra Script, or from the Ultra Script, uh, upstairs in room six. We're going to hear a couple songs from him. Definitely, definitely check him out live if you get the chance. Thank you. Or follow the social media downstairs, or downstairs, (laughs) down the description, (laughs) so you can um, find out where he's going or where he's going to play next. Thank you. In the meantime, yeah, I guess we'll temporarily say goodbye. Thank you for your time, Room 6. Yep. And Happy New Year, everybody. To the music. I'm the ultimate script. There's something more. I don't think more. I don't think more. I don't think more.
I want to thank Josh Gilbert from the Altered Script for dropping by. It was a great interview and a great performance. If you want to see more like this, click up there. If you'd like to check out my own music, click over there. And if you'd like to subscribe, it really does make a difference. Click up there. Remember, ring the bell. Um, other than that, really hope you click down there for all his social media. And hope you have a great day. And remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on Room 6.